After 37 years in power, demanding nothing less than absolute loyalty, Robert Mugabe's reign was never going to end at the ballot box. But few could have imagined those two weeks in November 2017 when his military moved against him and his people took to the streets. So what did those crowds mean to former President Mugabe? What did he say? You saw that they spoke. You saw that they spoke. Did it break him? It moved him. It moved him in this sense that he realized they are speaking to say it is, this is enough. In negotiations, the generals would salute the man they were looking to overthrow. Still, the coup and his resignation was a humiliating exit for Mugabe, whose very name came to define Zimbabwe. This is a man who had so much to offer to Zimbabweans, but he didn't. He focused on himself. What a tragedy. The death of Robert Mugabe breaks my heart within the context of the millions of lives that he destroyed, the million, millions of lives that he wrecked. Robert Mugabe's legacy was built by violence and oppression. And an economic collapse so bad, money became worthless and millions fled. For many, he left behind a shell of a country. I, Robert Gabriel Mugabe, do swear... So it's easy to forget that at first he was likened to Nelson Mandela. Mugabe preached reconciliation after a brutal liberation struggle that he helped lead. Repaired bonds with former colonial master Britain, he was even knighted. The historical links between the United Kingdom and Zimbabwe, which date from far back in history, have grown from strength to strength over the years. A young Zimbabwe became the envy of the continent. Mugabe, trained as a teacher, presided over an education revolution and a thriving agricultural powerhouse. Robert Mugabe was my hero. And I looked up to Robert Mugabe's eloquence, uh, Robert Mugabe's uh, uh, confidence in postulating amazing positions. And I, I decided that this is the man that impressed me. But Mugabe liked to say he had a degree in violence. And from the start, he squashed dissent. How, how, how? Yes, I saw people being killed. I saw them killed. And you could not say a word. Alice Mwali relives her trauma every day. Her back was broken by the North Korean-trained 5th Brigade as they swept through Matabeleland in 1983. The operation was called Gukura Hundi in Shona, or the rains that wash away the chaff. Meant to crush Mugabe's rivals, civilians were targeted, victims chosen along ethnic lines. When Mugabe's power was again threatened, this time at the ballot, he sanctioned violent attacks, seizing white-owned farms by so-called war veterans, strengthening his hand. And he crushed a rising opposition, using his hold on state security. But the violence shocked the world. Mugabe was abandoned by the West and its aid, and the country never fully recovered. They want to come to us and dictate to us what we must do. That shall never be. Not in Zimbabwe. Never, never. Whatever the cost. Robert Mugabe Whatever. was not an idiot in the country. He worked hard for this country. Mistakes were done, but he's a man who cared. But ultimately, of course, the president is, in the end, wholly responsible for whatever action. Actions throughout a long rule and rapid demise that many critics say were driven by Mugabe's number one priority, himself. That report from our David McKinsey and David now joins me on the line from Johannesburg with more about this breaking news story. Certainly, David, your story there outlined the years and years of abuse uh, that the people suffered under uh, his leadership, if you call it that. But uh, he was 95 years old. Are you learning anything more about his death? And is there reaction coming in now from the country? Well, it's, it's an early morning in Harare, Natalie, and there will be very mixed reaction, I'm sure, on the death of this icon of the liberation uh, struggle in Africa, but also a scion of the subsequent 
slide of Zimbabwe as a very uh, admired democratic country into what has become a economic mess. Uh, Robert Mugabe, we know, was in Singapore, a place where he frequently received medical attention over the years and spent a great deal of time. It's assumed that he is uh, still there when he passed. No clear details from his family yet, but we did get word uh, very uh, recently, as uh, we have been reporting, that the current president of Zimbabwe, Emerson Manangago, who was his right-hand man for many years, has uh, put out saying it is with the utmost sadness that I announce the passing of Zimbabwe's founding father and former president, uh, Robert Mugabe. Obviously, this is an ironic statement because it was Emerson Menengagwa who was in part spearheading that apparent coup to ouster his former boss. Uh, but there will be a lot of plaudits and praise as well as criticism for Robert Mugabe today throughout Africa, I'm sure. Right. And I remember, David, when Menengagwa uh, came into office, you're reporting there um, about the hope that the people had for their country. Uh, so many young people there energized they're highly educated yet there is no jobs in that country and still zimbabweans suffer they have not seen uh the reforms that have altered their life very much have they it's a very strong point and in just recent weeks you've seen allegations of kidnappings of activists uh, and uh, human rights lawyers uh, again people saying that well mugabe left that Zimbabwe is like the old Zimbabwe, that you still have these alleged human rights abuses ongoing in that country. Uh, there have been protests that have been quelled violently in the past few weeks there. Uh, but the bigger issue, I think, for ordinary Zimbabweans is, as you suggest, the economic collapse of that country, the lack of reforms uh, that outsiders say should be happening. Uh, but the current president, Emerson Menengagwa, is also dealing with a, a economy that he inherited uh, from his predecessor. As I said, there will be very mixed feelings about the passing of this icon. Uh, as I said in that report, he was likened to Nelson Mandela in the early decades of his rule, a person who really came in and helped uh, heal the wounds of a violent past in Zimbabwe and move forward with a very strong education system and a system that developed the country uh, more so than many African countries post-independence. Uh, but subsequently, his stranglehold on power and his way of dealing with dissent really did uh, tarnish his legacy. And I think that will be perhaps his primary legacy today, uh, though people in the African, uh, the African leadership might be trying to push the fact that he was a liberation icon as well, a complicated character and certainly one of the icons of the 20th century in, in Africa. Right, and, and with that, a complicated legacy as well. Let's talk about him with Reedy Talbi. She joins me on the phone from Johannesburg. She's a commentator and talk show host. Reedy, uh, Obviously, Mugabe, a complex man. He was once described as being like Nelson Mandela, but he was ousted in disgrace. What will be his legacy? Natalie, I can confirm that Robert Mugabe has died. He's seen as the founding father of a democratic Zimbabwe, but there's no debate that in the three decades of his rule, Zimbabwe went from being uh, a, a thriving nation to being a beggar on the African continent. He's still held in high esteem by many of the freedom fighters, but for new generations of Zimbabweans, he is the man who denied them democracy, who denied it that denied them opportunities and led to so many Zimbabweans fleeing and going to other African uh, countries in search, I suppose, of a better life. Right. And now uh, someone who served alongside him, Mr. Menengagwa, is in charge. But yet the reforms uh, that the people have wanted to see uh, after Mugabe dug this hole for this country have not quite been realized. What, what will this uh, signify for the people there who are trying to move on in life? I think generally Zimbabweans have been very forgiving. They will think of Mugabe with affection despite these many dire socioeconomic problems. And certainly for Emerson Nangakwa, there was never any doubt that rebuilding Zimbabwe will take 
decades of reform. Firstly, the civil liberties that Zimbabweans have been fighting for have not been realized. The regime, the police, the military is still seen largely as repressive. Nangagwa has brought in younger ministers in the form of uh, the finance minister who's uh, educated in London, headed a business school here in Johannesburg. So he's seen as a reformist. But Zimbabwe simply does not have the tools and the assets needed urgently right now to rebuild the country. It will take a long time. So certainly Nangwaga has opened up the media space marginally. He's appointed younger, newer ministers, and it is hoped that they will usher Zimbabwe into a new era. But naturally, it is no small task because Zimbabwe literally went to its knees under Mugabe. And may I add Nangagwa as his deputy. So Nangagwa straddled the previous dark period of Zimbabwe and even this new dawn of Zimbabwe. Many are skeptical about his ability and his intention.